We will not be releasing information on the fatalities at this time while we are working on notifying the family members of the deceased. We're no longer looking for a suspect vehicle. We do have a person of interest in custody at the moment, but this is still a very fluid investigation. Waukesha, Wisconsin, Chief of Police Daniel Thompson confirming they have a person of interest in custody after a driver plows into families and participants at a packed parade. Joining me now, Bob Bianchi, criminal defense attorney. Bob, thanks for being here. As a prosecutor, former prosecutor, what's your initial evaluation of what you saw? It seemed to me, Todd, when I saw a, a specific breakdown of a car going through, that at a certain point in time, just before when he's approaching the parade, the car veers to the left, uh, looking as if they're trying to avoid those per, uh, per, those people that are in the parade. However, there were all sorts of people to the left of that uh, that got injured. So initially, there were thoughts that it may be terrorism. Um, I don't think that that's going to be in play with regard to this because of that particular issue. There were many targets of interest that they could have gone after that could have caused more carnage. To me, initially, uh, it looks like this person may have been fleeing. Uh, another scene, perhaps when the police officer shot, fired shots, adrenaline's pumping. They're just going through that crowd. They're just looking to get away. So we don't know. There's a lot of facts we just don't know yet. And clearly, as a former prosecutor, we want to make sure, was there anyone else involved? We want to break down all the social media components. We want to find what the motive is to this particular situation. And obviously, uh, there's a lot more information. When I was the prosecutor and had to do uh, press conferences, I know the media wanted to be so far out ahead. But... The, the job of investigating is laborious. Uh, so we typically go slow and steady. That's the right way to do things, as opposed to uh, you know getting out too far out in front of the facts right now. So we'll have to wait and see, Todd. Quickly, before we get to the next topic, how much interaction is there right now going on between the police and the prosecutors? Well, there should be a tremendous amount. Uh, this is a big issue I always have. When police do investigations like this, they should talk to the prosecutors. I always have my prosecutors involved in any significant investigation. Why? Because at the end of the day, when they charge somebody, the prosecutors are the ones that have to go into the courtroom and prove that case beyond a reasonable doubt. Maybe the next subject that we're talking about with Rittenhouse is going to be uh, an illustration of what happens right. when that is not done correctly. However, in this particular situation, you want to make sure that their rights are protected and the lawyer, the, that the rights are read for, uh, right, that uh, the investigation is done correctly, that the trial can proceed so you can prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. And that falls into the hands of prosecutors at the end of the day. So prosecutors being involved at this stage of the investigation, crucial. You mentioned Rittenhouse. Let's pivot to that now. Only an hour away there in the state of Wisconsin. Here is Kyle Rittenhouse from his exclusive interview with Tucker Carlson. Listen. This case has nothing to do with race. Um, it never had anything to do with race. It had to do with the right to self-defense. Right. Um, I'm not a racist person. I support the BLM movement. I support peacefully demonstrating. But as you know, Bob, that doesn't matter to so many Democrats, so many in the mainstream media, and so many of our leaders in Congress, including Congressman Jerry Nadler, who's now calling for the DOJ to review the Rittenhouse case. Here's what he tweeted right after the verdict. This heartbreaking Ooh. verdict is a miscarriage of justice. It sets a dangerous precedent which justifies federal re review by DOJ. Justice cannot tolerate armed persons crossing state lines looking for trouble while people engage in First Amendment protected protest. On a plethora of levels, that entire statement is filled with falsehoods. But the bigger picture, why do Democrats and the mainstream media seem so hell-bent on destroying the justice system and resorting to trial by mob when they do not get the result that they want? Yeah, this is an interesting thing, and it's it's saddening to me. I'm not a political commentator. I'm a legal analyst, okay? So when we first got this case, I, had, I wrote down uh, when I was hosting my own show that he brought the gun to Kenosha that he was a member of a white supremacist group, that he was the initial aggressor. He never attempted to retreat. He provoked all the encounters, and he shot peaceable protesters. However, when we covered the show, gavel to gavel, Todd, in other words, we watched the entire thing. We realized he did not cross state lines with the weapon. He is not a member of a white supremacist group. He did, this was not a person that was the initial aggressor, or nor did he provoke any encounter. He was the one that was being pursued. Look, he was a cop wannabe. This is very clear from the record. He went there to, to take graffiti down. He went there to pr provide medical help to people. He did not initiate this. He was the one being pursued. And when I was doing the show, it was interesting to me, whether it was an African-American lawyer that was one of my guests, or Hispanic, or Asian, or a white person, or they're conservative, whether they were liberal, 
when the state's case went in, at a certain time, I got on and there was a witness testifying for the state, and I asked my producer, is this a defense witness that right. got called out of turn? Maybe because it couldn't. And they were like, no, this is the third victim, Gross Kruitz. I'm like, but he's the, the witnesses themselves <laughs> right. in the state's case were providing the self defense claim. I was in complete shock. And all of us collectively knew there would not be a guilty. Most were thinking it would be a hung jury uh, or maybe an outright acquittal. So it's sad because there's narratives versus facts. And in the court of public opinion, right. people have a narrative. But unfortunately, if they had looked at the trial, the prosecution didn't have the evidence. The only thing that matters is the evidence presented within the four walls of that courtroom. Nothing else matters. The mob needs to realize that. Otherwise, our system of justice is in a lot of trouble. Bob Bianchi, thank you very much. Do not forget to tune in tonight at 8 p.m. to watch.